Well, welcome back to UFOs Above Us. All right, today we're going to be discussing helium-3 mining of the moon. And I, I know it's a complicated subject, so I put some background from information for people about helium-3. And there's two types of nuclear reactions. You can have fission or fusion. Fission is where you split an atom into two smaller pieces and it liberates a large amount of energy. That's what we do with our traditional nuclear power plants. Um, they split atoms, but they also generate a lot of radioactive waste. Fusion is different. In nuclear fusion, what you do is you actually combine two atoms, either uh, the common ones are deuterium and helium-3 or two helium-3 atoms. And when they're combined, they create traditional helium-4, plus they liberate some protons of just standard hydrogen, as well as a lot of energy. The beauty about it is though they're clean. So it's the future of energy. Okay, so enough of the introduction. Let's go ahead and take a look at the picture. And I do have it blown up um, so it fits in this frame. I'll kind of shrink it down just so you can see. So this is the original photograph of the moon I shot again with my 11-inch um, telescope and mirrorless camera. Um, and then we'll blow it back out so we can see the full picture there. So that's what we're looking at. And the area of interest to me is right in here. And I will just direct your attention. When I was looking at the original photograph, I noticed a straight horizontal line. And you, can, you should be able to see it even in the small image, the original image there. And it was sitting on top of that crater. And I thought that looked odd. So I thought, well, I'm going to investigate that. So I'm going to blow it on up. And then when I did, it took me a little while. You know, studying these moon pictures is not as easy as you might think. You don't see things right off the bat. You have to kind of study a picture and let your eye acclimate to what you're looking at there to be able to discern the fine details. And so as I took a little while to look at this, I was looking at that line. And when I look at it here blown up, it looks more like a, a pipe. And then I saw these two, looks like, you know, vertical cylinders on this pipe. And I was staring at them a little more and I see that shadow and I thought, well, that shadow looks odd. And as I looked at it more carefully, I thought, it almost looks like those shadows are coming out of the ends of those pipes. And so then I looked at this crater base here. And if you look at the rim, you can see a shadow in the bottom of the crater, except you can see the rim here and you can track it all the way around the crater. And as it gets to about right here, the crater disappears. It turns black and then you see it again here. So I believe what's going on is this is something coming out of these pipes and filling up the base of that crater. And if you look carefully, the color of black right here on the shadow is different than the color of black that starts right here. So if you look right here, I think what we're looking at is actually a pile of lunar regolith. And I think what's happening is if you follow this pipe back, there's an apparatus here that's actually mining it. When you look here, you can see the pipe splits right here. Do you see how it splits into two? So you got a, a pipe here with two nozzles. Pipe goes back and then it splits. It forks this way and this way. And then if you follow that fork around right here, it goes back this way and then back down. So it forms a triangle right there. And then if you look a little closer even, you'll notice right here, there's another vertical circle. And I gave that some thought and I thought, well, I bet that is actually a wheel. And this thing actually gets moved around on the moon to mine it. No different than a, a, a drilling rig here on Earthwood where they have to have a way to move them around. Uh, they're usually mounted on trucks, but this one's mounted on this elaborate platform. And if you look at it, it looks like it has some kind of a circular apparatus here and then two cylinders sticking up here, a little one here, a bigger one here, the bigger one even looks like it might have something coming out of it. Like kind of reminded me of if you've ever looked at a smokestack or an old wood burning stove, it kind of looks like maybe smoke coming out of that. So I started giving that some more thought, doing a little research into helium three and the way that the scientists believe helium three is going to be mined. If it is mined on the moon is that they will actually have to superheat it up to about 600 degrees Celsius, which is really, really hot. And when they do that, then the, the, you crush the regolith, you superheat it, and that will liberate the helium-3, which then can be captured in a, like a vacuum chamber or some kind of a pressurized chamber. And you'll be able to pipe out 
the helium-3 that's captured and filtered out of the uh, other uh, gases that might liberate in the heat. So I wonder if this regolith on the moon, which is usually gray to whitish, when it's superheated, I wonder if it turns black. And then I started looking at some other craters, and lo and behold, here's a crater. And if you look at that shadow, the unusual thing about the shadow, look right there. I believe that's actually a mound of regolith as well. This is the one that was most clear to me. Here's the crater. So let's follow the crater rim around. Disappears. Turns black. Picks back up. And if you look carefully, there's a different shade of black right here versus right here. And you can see a big mound of something black right there. A great big mound in the base of that crater. Now, let me just ask you, if you were mining um, helium-3 on the moon and you wanted to try to hide your operation from people on Earth, what better way to do it than to have the, the mining tailings that are black and dump them in the base of craters? Because the shadows of the crater look black, when you pour black things into a crater, you've got that void you can fill up, and from the earth, if you're not really looking carefully, you won't notice a thing. So how clever is that? Just like this pipe, if I were picking the color for that, I would have it this whitish color because it blends in so well with the moon. So you've got these wheels, and I looked on the other side, I thought, well, if this triangular vehicle or whatever this is, machinery, has a wheel here, there should be one on the corresponding side of it. And lo and behold, if you look right there, there's the arc from the other wheel right there. Now, obviously, you can't see the whole wheel, but it's hidden by this thick uh, framing for this equipment. So you can see this full wheel, but on this side, you can only see the top sticking up. And then for these two cylinders, they could be part of the heating operation. So what I think we have here is we're looking at proof that there's not just past mining on the moon, that it's still actively going on. And so the only question we'd have to ask is, well, if there's mining going on, that's radical enough, but the next question would be, who's doing it? Is it the United States? Is it Russia? Is it a partnership between the United States and Russia, which has been my theory all along about um, exploration. Um, everybody tries to make Russia our enemy. I don't believe that for a minute. I think when it comes to space, we're much more of teammates than we are enemies. And to keep appearances, everybody in Russia has to have national pride in Russia. Everybody in America wants to have national pride in America. And so there's kind of this created animosity when there shouldn't be. And my theory is that we're, there may be a partnership between the United States and Russia. But saying that, the third option is that there could be other beings that have a vested interest in clean energy production and helium-3 is the way to go. And, you know, I won't, I don't have any definitive proof that this isn't the United States or Russia. So I'll just ask you to study the picture very carefully. And there may be some clues as to who is actually operating, who's operating this machinery. I wonder who it could be. So I'll leave that up to you. Um, but I am going to say that, you know, if you're trying to visualize that operation, I did a little kind of crude, super crude conception of what I think we're seeing there. We're seeing a triangular something, you know, equipment with a pair of wheels on it with two cylinders. One, I think, is emitting smoke because it's probably superheating that um, regolith. We've got some kind of apparatus in the front. I'm guessing just total shot in the dark guessing that it maybe it's to crush the the rock or the regolith on the moon um, and then we've got these two pipes it's really one pipe splits into two but i didn't have a way to draw one and then fork it so i just put it as two um, but then i tried to illustrate here's the crater with the mound of regolith piled up so i just tried to do that to help you visualize what we're seeing in this and I'm going to go ahead and blow it up a little larger. That's as big as I can take it. That'd be 500% of, of uh, original. And I'll let you look at some of the characteristics of this equipment right here. There's the very clearly defined, not a horizontal circle, but a vertical circle. 
And there's the corresponding one on the other side. Here's the large cylindrical pipe or whatever coming up. It's, you know, cooking part with what looks like smoke coming off of it right here. Here's a smaller one, maybe to hold the helium-3 that gets extracted or liberated. Um, here's the fork that ties into a single pipe that leads down to this unusual uh, quote-unquote bracket. And then the two nozzles discharging the black uh, mining tailings onto the surface of the moon. And there's other things in this picture, but I just don't want it to go any longer than it already has. Um, there's something here. And there's something right here that looks like two bands attaching this white base. Um, so I don't know what this is, but I, I suspect that all this is related. Um, and I don't know what this is, but this certainly, in my theory, is that's what we're looking at is some kind of a, and I know that's a crude drawing, but just to help you visualize, that's a crude piece of machinery. And the shocking thing about it is it's happening on the surface of our moon. Now, I'm going to wrap up by saying, you know, clean energy should be something everybody can get behind. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat, a Republican, an Independent. Um, it doesn't matter what your religious beliefs are. Clean energy is something that we could all rally behind. So if helium-3 is the answer to our energy needs, and it can lead to a pollution-free, abundant energy source, why wouldn't we want to go after it? So um, for UFOs above us, it is what it is. This is a picture I shot myself. I'm giving my opinions. And if there's anybody that wants to question uh, my pictures or look at more, perhaps someone from a, uh, an official capacity. You know, I started off with my little plug about Elon Musk. And I'll finish with another plug that I think SpaceX is on the right path, that he believes space is the future. I do too. Um, so for UFOs above us, keep watching those skies. The answers we're all seeking, they are up there.